of you very quickly today with my accent. I'm not from Utah. I'm from somewhere else. I'm also, I'm something you didn't expect. I'm a southerner with an IQ greater than a shoe size who talks very, very fast. So to get you used to that, I've designed a little quiz for you. I'm going to ask a bunch of questions. I'm going to ask them very fast. I need you to answer as fast as you can. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, thanks both of you. Let's try this again. <laughs> I'm asking a bunch of questions. I'm very fast. Did you answer as fast as you can? Can you do that? Yes. You ready? Yes. What do you do at a stop sign? Stop. What color is a stop sign? Red. What does red mean? Stop. stop. Red doesn't mean danger. <laughs> red means danger. That's very important. For one thing, I'm driving on the same road you are out here in Park City. I'd kind of like you to know what a stop sign is. <laughs> the other reason is when you're driving down the road, you see something red off the side. The leaves are changing. You might see something red. Don't stop. You cause a collision. Men in particular. If you're driving down the road and you see a woman walking down the street in a red dress, don't stop. It means danger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two more questions and we're out of this session. Right, the last two? Wait, what? Yes. Three minutes. Let's try this again. <laughs> two more questions. Right, the last two? Yes. 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 Sure. Yes. What do you do to yield sign? Yes. Yes. What color do you yield sign? Yes. Yes. Everybody says they're yellow, but since 19, well, actually the last 40 years, by federal law, <laughs> now, you've been driving on our roads for 40 years and you don't have a clue what color a yield sign is. How many did you have to pass just to get here? My question is, what else has been going on that you have overlooked or you might have missed in the last 40 years? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I was noticing we're sitting over here in the ring in the USA today. And Brandon and I were talking about, I brought a USA Today my own. I like it when they hand these out in hotels, they're really cool. This is a July edition, if you don't mind me reading one slightly older. <laughs> Reports show, this is the money section, I want you to hear this. Reports show economy mending. Obama sees the beginning of the end of the recession. Economic indicators keep telling, keep saying what investors have known for months. Things are getting better. The evidence of recovery is building every day, says Jim Paulson of Wells Capital Management. It's settling and gives people more faith in what they've seen from the stock and bond markets. Fran, do me a favor. Yes. Would you read me just the date of that? July 30th, 2009. 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, the economy is down. If you woke up this morning and you were down or something going on in the credit unit or down or deposits or down or membership or things cost too much, it doesn't go up and down. It's different. It doesn't do this. It did this. It's over here now. Losers are down. Leaders are different. The economy is down. It's different. Now, I'll illustrate that with a couple of points. The people who publish this book are being run out of business by the people who made this device. This is my this is my book. It's one that's for sale out there. By the way, I'm having a weird autograph part. Let me go over. I only got one more slide, and we're done. <laughs> Did I touch a nerve? The whole part of this slide I got from my daughter. Uh, she went to Lady Gaga concert. This slide was inspired by Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga on her concerts has people tweet her. If you like something you heard, send me a tweet. I'll follow you too. If you don't know what Twitter is, don't worry, okay? But the newsletter, the sign-up sheet, it comes out once a month in November. issue's coming out next week. Uh, and we were just working on the article, and it's about it's okay to make mistakes. Have you noticed in this election cycle that it's, it's, it, it's not okay to not be perfect? <laughs> You're supposed to be perfect. I thought we were like these perfect people to be president, senator, representative, mayor, dog catcher. Garbage commissioner. Nobody's perfect. And I list a bunch of people that made the sense. A bunch of people that, one of my favorite, I have a little quiz I put in there and said, who led the, the league in strikeouts the year that Babe Ruth led the league in home runs? Did anybody know who it was? Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. You're either known for your mistakes or you're known for your success. Lady Gaga is one of the people I mentioned in there. Lady Gaga was told that she had no talent and could never sing. She's worth over 50. $9 million today. Simon Cowell used to be on uh, American 
Kyle? He's one of the stories we do out there. Um, Letty got it, I asked people to tweet her, and then she tweets them back later, or she can invite them to come on stage and she'll send a uh, solo to them if it's a good tweet. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. I'm saying that we hear it. But that's the whole purpose of that slide. Um, here's the last slide. Are you ready? Are you awake? Come on, y'all got to stay awake. I've heard all this before, okay? <laughs> There's the last slide. Okay, that was the first one. There's the other one right there. I only want three things on today. Sign up to the easy. If you like something you hear, give me your card and then vote on the back. By the way, if you're a board member, let me warn you something. If you give me a card that says you're with the Utah Power Credit Union, I'm just going to call one out. Did I pick on y'all one of If it has their phone number and your name, I'm just telling you what's going to happen when I call you. know, I want your card and then vote if you would like me to come work with your credit union. This is what I do. I just worked out in Teachers Credit Union a couple of weeks ago in Alabama, Texas. If I call the credit union, I get a receptionist, and you're just on the board. I'm, I'm going to tell you what they're saying. Oh, she doesn't work care. She gets on the dang board. We have to see her once a month. <laughs> I'm warning you. Be careful what card you give me. And the last thing is, I would be honored if you would autograph mine. This is the only hard copy available. The public gave me hard copy. The others are paperback. You will see I have autographs from everybody all over the place. It's all about my traveling here. Now, I'd be honored if you'd autograph my book. I'm reading many autograph parties today. If you autograph this book, it's free. If you autograph the ones that are out there in the lobby, they're $20 a piece. You know, yours will be the only one in the book. Now, this thing is running these people out of business. Because these people think their business is all about paper, ink, and glue bindings. And I get a phone call or an email message from a publisher once a month asking me, how many books have you shown? How many books have you sold? How many books have you shown? How many books are you dealing with? Okay? And I'm past the limit, so they don't call me as anxious. They used to say, hey, how do you know? Because it makes them look good. Because they think they're all about this. The book is also available on Kindle, but unfortunately, I can sell you one today, and I can't autograph it for you either. But the content of these two is identical. This book is on this, or would be, but I haven't charged this in two years. Well, I can download all this to my smartphone, tablet, laptop, so why do I need this whole bulky thing that's in black and white? The content, though, of these two is identical. Have you seen the movie My Cousin Vinny? Identical. <laughs> the difference is in the delivery method. These people think their business is all about paper and blue lines. These people think their business is it's all about content delivered to you now, fast, right away. And this Christmas, these, wow, well, sell these, 10 to 1. Uh, this story is in the book. I was flying on an airplane several years ago, and I ran into a guy named Tom. Uh, Tom, I, I got moved up to first class because I fly a lot, turned out to be a free upgrade, and I sat next to Tom. Tom's in a very nice suit. Older gentleman, gray hair. Very expensive suit. And Tom, uh, we sat there like any guy on an airplane and said, hey, my name's Jim, my name's Tom. What do you do for a living, Tom? He said, well, I'm retired right now. He said, but I used to be in the pizza delivery business. He said, you're dressed very nice and you're in first class. That's pretty good for a guy to get to a little son. He said, no, no, it must have worked for me. I'm a retired executive with Domino's Pizza. Now, let's get down to dirt. Does Domino's make a better pizza than Pizza Hut? No, they don't. They really don't. Tom said they don't. Domino's said they don't. Um, I said, why did you say you're in the pizza delivery business? He said, because we tried for years you know, to make a better pizza than Pizza Hut, and we just like to do it. We tried to change the formula. We tried to change the ingredients. We tried to change the packaging. You know the lace in it? When people see a value, they will line up to get it. When people see a value in doing business with your credit union, when, they, when members and other people who are prospective members see a value that you present for doing business with you. Simple one, in my credit union in Atlanta, before we moved down, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Kroger grocery store. We have Kroger's all the place down there. My credit union was in a corner of a Kroger grocery store. I don't think it was as large <laughs> as that entire area right over there that almost no one said there. The whole credit union was there. Now that's not the whole business, that's just that branch. 
explain to me how I could go in there, open a new account, and get an ATM debit card in five minutes that worked, had my name embossed on it, and I could check it in ATM. And, I, and flip side, I'm speaking to an independent bankers group down in Albuquerque. And I was telling this story when one of the guys raised his hand and said, I'm a branch manager of our biggest branch in Albuquerque. I came here in November, this is in January. He said, I apply for an ATM card. I'm still waiting on that to be shown. Part of the value of Delta Candy Credit Union was they could break, present me an ATM card right away. Another value, they were in every airport and I traveled a lot. They were everywhere Delta flies and I fly Delta. Yes, I'm being punished by Delta as we speak. <laughs> I can find a Delta Community Credit Union where I go. Because of branch sharing, I can find almost any credit union. I've done business with the Tacoma uh, teachers, the Spokane teachers. I've done business with uh, Midwest Credit Union in Missouri. I've done business with Credit Union in Pennsylvania, one in, one in Maine, all over the Southeast. Because when I speak, I can take the, the check that the meeting planner gives me, I can deposit it into my The object of the first call is to get the second call, not to get information, to make them want more. I do a thing called an airplane speech. It's a variation of elevator speech, but I don't like elevator speech just because the doors on the elevator are open too quick. You ought to be able to say what you do in your job that benefits others to the extent that they want to know more. Like my friend Mike, I help people in construction who want to make more money. Does that make sense? I help business leaders who want to reinvent themselves and change economic climate. Does that make sense? No, say you know, does that make sense? It makes them say yes or no. They're on the table here and they're not. But I want, if I'm sitting on an airplane next to an executive and he says, what do you do for a living? I can say, I help people like you. Notice I put you in there. I help people like you. Who want to reinvent themselves in a changing economic climate? Wow, we're going to get the chart. How do you do that? The goal is to get them to say, How do you do it? This is in the book. It's a story. I was sitting on an airplane several years ago next to a guy named Tom. And uh, I was up in first class. Delta bumped me up in first class. And Tom bought his ticket in first class. Very, very nice suit. Gray hair up here, older man. And uh, I sat there. I said, My name's Jim. I said, My what do we do for a living, Tom? He said, well, I'm retired now. But I used to be in the pizza delivery business. You bought your ticket first. I can't. I made that much money. I'm retired right now. I said, you made that much money driving a car around a little sign on top. He said, no, 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 no. They all used to work for me. I'm a retired executive with Domino's Pizza Company. Now, real quick, does Domino's make a better pizza than Pizza Hut? No, no they don't. Domino's said me. Tom said me. He said, Jim, we tried for years to make a better pizza than Pizza Hut, and we were like, we just cannot do it. But we noticed something one day. Write this one down. Go to free. I'm on free right now. We noticed something. We noticed that when our phone rang, no one was asking us how good the pizza was. Everybody was asking us how. After you get it here. We got out of the pizza business, got the pizza delivery business. And we changed the industry. UPS got, got out of where the heck is my package. Got, got out of delivery and into where the heck is my package. <coughs> and you call it tracking. Not even the post office. They're not really good at it, but they do. We got a package yesterday at her house. Laura got an email from UPS saying it didn't work. Because UPS got out of where the heck is my package. That's the number one, what's the number one thing your customers or clients are telling you they want? That's what you need to get the business doing. That is your frequent, loyal base telling you what they wish you were doing.